Hey guys, today we are performing a detailed review of Reolink's brand new Argus 4 Pro Plus. This camera is just getting launched in June 2024. Yeah, that's right now. And as of this time frame, it's the world's first 4K battery operated camera with Color X night vision and a dual image. It even has a 180 degree field of view and supports Wi-Fi 6. Can, can all this be true? All right, so right off the bat, special thanks to Reolink for hooking me up with this brand new camera in exchange for my honest review. I also have a coupon code for you, which I'll share with you later in the video. Here's what's on the menu for today. First off, I want to express my excitement for the Wi-Fi 6 support. Then we're gonna pop open the box, see what's included. After that, we're gonna review the camera specifications and I'll show off some examples of the footage. Then we're going to get the camera hooked up to the Wi-Fi 6 and I'm going to use this brand new Ubiquiti IPX5 U6 access point. After that, I'm going to show you how to install the camera and then we're going to finish things off with some practical testing, including a Wi-Fi range test and a water test. Lastly, we'll close things out with some final thoughts. So I'm super excited to be testing this device because it's a 4K battery operated camera and that's pretty much unheard of. That's because they require so much battery power for all of its features, including 4K processing, powering night vision IR lights, and streaming high definition over Wi-Fi. A weak Wi-Fi signal is going to drain those batteries even faster. So what makes this camera so exciting is that it has no IR lights and it supports Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax. It will work just fine with your current Wi-Fi, but it works better on 6. That doesn't necessarily mean 6 gigahertz. It's an upgrade to the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequencies. And not only does Wi-Fi 6 penetrate walls better, it's faster in the way of transfer speeds and latency because it handles traffic more effectively. It's also beam forming and will direct its signal towards the router or access point and not in all directions. It also supports a faster Wi-Fi wake time. When selecting a Wi-Fi 6 access point or router, make sure that it has the 802.11ax standard. All of this enhances the battery life of the camera. Up next, we're going to jump into the box and see what's included. First off, we have a quick start guide, everything you need to know to get started. An operation manual, for the solar panel, a couple of dual templates, one for mounting the camera and the other for the solar panel, a window sticker, and here we have the solar panel. Its long cable has a USB-C connector. It's pretty impressive, super thin and well built. This panel will have no issues keeping those batteries topped up, even on cloudy days. And next out of the box, we have a strap for the solar panel in case you cannot attach it to the mounting surface with screws. And here we have screws, and this is a back plate. The plate gets screwed onto the mount if you're using the belt like this. And next we have a piece of foam to keep a seal between the panel and the mounting surface to keep bugs out. And this of course is the mount. And moving on to the camera's accessories, we have a belt for it, a little bag of screws, and a backplate for the camera, which works the same way as it does for the solar panel. And this is a USB cable to fully charge up the camera before installing it outside. It does come partly charged, so you're good to get things set up here right away. And next we have the camera's mount. It swivels and turns freely and can be secured by twisting and tightening the outer cover. Pretty cool. And last, of course, we have the camera, the star of the show, and I'm not sure if it's the weight of the batteries inside, but it's definitely very solid. So the first thing you're going to notice is the face-like appearance of the camera. That's because this camera is actually two cameras in one. The camera's firmware takes each image and stitches them together into an incredible super wide 180 degree picture. The height of the image is 50 degrees. The two images together add up to 4K or 5120 by 1440 pixels, and it can record at 15 frames per second. That resolution allows us to read license plates at a range of about 35 feet or just over 10 and a half meters away. So far, I'm pretty impressed that you get twice the coverage all in one device. 
Each of the camera's eyes is very wide, and that's by design. With an aperture of f1.0, they allow in a huge amount of light onto those 1 over 1.8 inch sensors. So much light, in fact, that Reolink has done away with the black and white night vision and infrared lights. That means the camera will use ambient light from street lights or property lights or even moonlight on a clear night to maximize the details and quality image, all in color. So let's jump into some footage of that ideal scenario. Here we are at night and I have my property lights on. As I stand here, I can easily read the license plate at about 30 to 35 feet away or just over nine meters. The image is pretty impressive. There's no noise or static and there's no ghosting. My facial expressions are also very recognizable. The camera also has a setting where it will turn on the spotlights when motion is detected. The brightness of the lights can also be configured in the app. Here is a comparison of the lights at their brightest and here at their lowest. Now in both of these cases, the license plate reflective surface will bounce back into the camera, blowing out the plate, but my facial features are still recognizable and the colors are pretty good. Okay, so next we're gonna take this a step farther, of course, and we're gonna completely turn off those lights outside and it's total darkness. The image is showing some noise or grain here, but that's expected. And there's just a smudge of ghosting, just enough to blur out that plate as I move towards the camera. But here we are at the 12 to 15 foot mark, around four meters, where the plate comes into view. So without IR night vision lights, the camera obviously provides an outstanding image, especially when there are some neighborhood lighting. This also allows the camera to save on battery power. I spent hours in the day and night testing this camera, and I didn't see the battery level dip below 85%. Reolink boasts that just 10 minutes of solar charging will charge the camera for a good 24 hours of use. And the two internal batteries will last 12 days once fully charged. The camera is also great at saving power because it uses a PIR sensor to detect motion. Instead of using extra power to compare incoming frames, the Argus 4 turns off the camera and uses the low power proximity sensor to watch for motion. It actually scans for energy temperature changes against the environment, like people, vehicles, or animals. A PIR sensor range is good for about 15 to 30 feet, or 4.5 to 9 meters, depending on the temperature difference, speed of the subject, and its size. Here, the PIR sensor is triggered at about 25 to 30 feet away and starts recording the clip. Then it wakes up the Wi-Fi and sends a notification. Now back here on the camera's face, we have the environment lighting sensor. So the camera knows when to turn those spotlights on at night if that setting is active. As you saw, there are three spotlights. And I like the feature that they can be configured to turn on when the PIR sensor picks up motion. And they can also be illuminated manually by clicking this button. And right below that middle light, we have a microphone. Hey guys, this is what the microphone sounds like at about 15 feet away. Hey guys, this is what the microphone sounds like at about 10 feet away. And in that example, it is pretty windy outside and the mic was able to filter out a lot of that noise. Pretty cool. Now, if we spin the camera around, there's a speaker on the back. Here's a sample of what that two-way audio sounds like. And this is the two-way audio. This is the two-way audio. And yes, I noticed a bit of lag, but it's not a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker. The camera also has an alarm feature. Let's go see what it sounds like outside. Okay, so we are about 50 feet away and this is what the alarm sounds like right now. On the back, we also have this little USB charging port and this is also where the solar panel gets connected, making a watertight seal. Under the little rubber cover here on the bottom, we have a power button and a micro SD card slot for cards up to 128 gigs. So simply drop in the card and hit format before using it. The motion recordings can be accessed remotely from the micro SD card, removing any requirement for subscription or cloud fees. And check this out. When looking at past footage, go to playback, select the type of playback you want, and you can see 
and review the thumbnails. The camera is showing us multiple frames here at once. This is a pretty cool feature and an indication of the increased processing power that this camera offers. Oh well, yeah, and since this is a battery operated device, it only records to the micro SD card when motion is detected and it does not record continuously. So this camera will not record to the Reolink NVR or a third party software management tool like Blue Iris. It does however work with the Reolink PC app, but it gives you a friendly message about battery life if you're streaming for very long periods of time. Now, like I mentioned before, this camera will connect to the standard 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. I am using Wi-Fi 6 on these frequencies. If you are familiar with my channel, I use Ubiquiti Wi-Fi access points inside and out, and they give me excellent connectivity. Once you have a Ubiquiti mesh network, adding additional devices is simply plug and play. I simply plug the access point into my PoE switch and here we are, we can see the new access point in Ubiquiti Manager. I click add to add it in and that's it. Once added, I can specify the Argus 4 to only use that access point. So we're definitely taking advantage of that Wi-Fi 6 feature. For more information on access points and my setup, please check out my other videos. So when you first take the camera out of the box, the initial setup is pretty straightforward. Turn on the camera using the button on the bottom. Welcome to Reolink. Please install Reolink app and scan the QR code on the camera. In the Reolink app, click the plus icon in the upper right hand corner. Scan the QR code. Select Bluetooth for the first time setup. Reset the camera as instructed. Enter your Wi-Fi password. Create an admin password for accessing the camera later. Give the camera a name and that's it. Let's jump in and do a quick lag test. Okay, yeah, not, okay, yeah. not too bad at all. Not too bad now at we're all. in low quality. Now Let's jump over quality. to high quality and see, quality if, there's and see if there's a difference. Okay, here we are. Okay, not not too bad at all. Not, pretty, not fantastic. Bad at all. pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. Just for the sake of argument, let's jump over so that we're on the cellular network. Okay, and the connectivity is a little bit slower, but definitely not a big deal. A little bit slower, but definitely not a big deal. So now we're going to jump in and look at the wake time when my phone is on my home network with the camera. It was very fast in most cases. Now a scattered time, maybe 99% of the time it worked, but that 1% of the time I did get a failure. When connecting over the cellular network, it was a tiny bit slower, but again, not a big deal since we are introducing another network into the connection. Okay, so up next, we're going to check out a time lapse of how I installed the camera. Okay, perfect. It only takes a few minutes and we're in business. I really like the look of this camera. And next we're going to check the range of the Wi-Fi. For my first test with my phone on the cellular network, I'm going to approach my fence on the back of my property, which is 300 feet or just over 91 meters away from my house where my access point right, is located. About, about 150 feet away. Things were very stable at this distance until I hit these trees. Then it was a bit laggy and I switched over from the 4K streaming to the 1K substream where I could continue the stream without any lag. Pretty impressive. Yeah, it definitely doesn't like the, um, the streaming at, at 4K at this distance. But streaming here uh, at the, uh, the lower resolution has no problems. Okay, so we should try this test again where we can go a little bit farther. I'm going to go out front and walk down the street. So long story short, I was almost 600 feet or 182 meters away from the access point with the Argus 4 before I lost connectivity. Not too bad. Oh yeah, and the security camera continued to record without a network connection. That's a pretty cool feature too. All right, lastly, it's time to break out the water hose and see how this camera can stand up to a torrent of rain. Yeah, pretty cool. The camera had no issues at all dealing with that water. All right, guys, time for some final thoughts. I did find that there was some lag with the live feed in its highest resolution. 
I'm more accustomed to wired devices with no lag. It's not a deal breaker, but it's the nature of wireless devices. Secondly, I wish the record time of any motion recordings was longer. I'd like an additional 10 to 15 seconds tacked on to that motion. Also, same thing with the LED lights. I wish they stayed on a little bit longer after they were triggered. Now for stuff that I did like, let's have a look at a few of them. The Wi-Fi 6, of course, it met all my expectations in wake up time, speed and range. Battery life, it's also great. I spent several hours day and night testing this camera and the battery stayed strong the whole time. The overall stability and processing power was also noted. I had very few issues interacting with the camera over the iPhone or the PC app. I was able to change settings, export footage, all while the camera was reacting to motion and recording new clips. Now lastly, the footage is also amazing and it deals with shadows and colors really well. But I think my new favorite feature has to be that Color X. This is my first all color camera with no black and white nighttime option. In an environment with some community ambient light, it works great with next to no blurring or ghosting. Links for everything seen here today can be found in the description below. I'm also going to post an Amazon coupon code for the US, Canada, Great Britain and Australia. The code is good for June 2024. As always, if you found this information helpful, do let me know with a thumbs up and please show your support by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future home tech DIY projects you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.